Hello, my name is Regina Harborn, and I'm the primary investigator of the Start Play study. And today I'm going to share with you information about our fidelity assessment and um, this article that is in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. I'd like to thank all of my co-investigators listed here and disclose that we received funding for the Start Play randomized controlled trial from the US Department of Education, Institute of Education Sciences. And here's the information on that and all the sites of our study. So what is fidelity and why is it important? Well, fidelity is the way that you can tell that the intervention of interest in a comparison of interventions is delivered as planned and that it has the right ingredients and at the right dosage. In addition, to measuring the way that those ingredients are delivered and the amount, you must also, for comparison's sake, measure the targeted, um, the intervention that is the other. So you measure the targeted intervention and then whatever the other intervention is. And in our case, it was usual early intervention. So it is measured in the same way so that you can compare the um, amount of intervention that you're delivering. So just to think a little bit about fidelity and describing it, how would you compare these two pictures? Are these the same? Well, you can tell that there are some things that are the same. They are both showing you playing ball. They both have a therapist. They both have the child with some sort of resistive device on them. But you can also say that, well, these are very different because in one case, the child appears to be able to move and uh, to have a little bit more freedom to respond to the movement. In the other, the children seem more constrained and unlikely to be able to participate. So these things can be measured and that would be included in a fidelity measure. Fidelity is important because we have many intervention studies, but we don't really know what works. Treatment fidelity has not been reported in quite a few randomized controlled trials. And in fact, less than 10% of our previous intervention studies have included intervention that's described with a fidelity measure. And in a recent systematic review that I participated in, looking at early motor intervention for children with cerebral palsy, none of the 34 studies that we included addressed how fidelity was ensured or how it was evaluated. So fidelity is defined as the degree to which the intervention is delivered as planned. So to develop the fidelity measure, first you have to identify the key components and that's usually done by understanding the theory of change that you're addressing with your intervention. Once you identify the things that you believe are key to your intervention, then you must establish a measurement system. And in our case, we videotaped intervention sessions and then coded them minute by minute. Once you have a measure, you have to evaluate the reliability of that instrument. Our instrument had 17 variables, which you can see in the background of this picture, which were operationally defined. We wanted to measure five dimensions of fidelity, adherence, differentiation, the quality of the intervention, the participant responsiveness, and the overall dosage. We used videos of both the start play intervention and the usual early interventions, and we coded minute by minute. So we had blinded uh, reviewers of these videos coding minute by minute. For our participants, we had 35 early interventionists. These are people working in usual early intervention, 14 start play therapists. There was no overall difference in the years of experience between these two groups of therapists, although there was a difference in post-professional education, and that was primarily because of the primary investigators at the different sites were included in the start play interventionists. The process of addressing fidelity included the development of the measure, as I stated, we had to redefine our, um, our operational definitions after initial coding of exemplar sessions. We initially coded, had two coders coding four videos, and then we had to redefine our operational definitions. 
Then we moved to 20 videos that were coded by these two coders and had interclass correlation coefficients from 0.73 to 0.95 for 16 of the items on the forms. We were then able to quantify fidelity by measuring 103 intervention videos. 64 of them were from the start play therapists and 39 were from the usual early interventionists uh, coded on all the variables. That allowed us to have a quantifiable number for adhere, adherence and program differentiation and a number of other categories. For adherence, we were very concerned with um, two particular parts of the measure. One was cognitive opportunities that was considered a pillar of the start play approach. And the start play therapists were to achieve an, at least an 80% um, amount of time spent on cognitive opportunities through motor activities. And they did achieve that. So 80% of the start play sessions included cognitive opportunities and only 13% included um, were included in the usual EI sessions. Another pillar was to be flexible and not rigid and allow the child to move and problem solve. And this was accomplished by 93% of the start play sessions um, and 74% of usual EI. So you can see that there's overlap between the two interventions and you want to be able to quantify that. So even though there was overlap, um, there was significant difference between start play and usual EI. So an example is in the adherence category for cognitive opportunities. You can see in these pictures that both of the therapists on the left in start play and on the right in the usual care picture are challenging the sitting position. But within the start play example, we have a cognitive opportunity provided during that um, motor activity, and we're keeping the cognitive components central. So allowing the child to really allow their resources to be used for a cognitive skill. Um, and so this is also a time when we're explaining to the parent um, object affordances, which are part of a cognitive construct. And in the early intervention example, we're seeing only motor. There's not a cognitive component here. And it's unclear about the parent engagement. We cannot tell in that picture. We also had uh, quality comparisons. Um, one of the things that we wanted was to see a just right challenge. And our uh, these were graded in a gestalt manner from one to four, with four being the best. Um, and these were all different between start play and early intervention for just right challenge the therapist engaging the parent in the activities, the parental interest in the session and the parental engagement with the child. Overall, we saw start play activities in 97% of a 50 minute session for the dosage for start play and 81% um, of a 40 minute session. So once we add everything up on our spreadsheet, we see a significant difference between the key ingredients that we think should be in start play versus what's in usual care. So to conclude, it's really important to look at fidelity of intervention as part of our comparisons of intervention studies. So our intervention has delivered the key ingredients of the approach at the planned dosage, so they adhered to the intervention key ingredients and it was significantly different than usual EI. Um, we were able to differentiate that start play was indeed different from usual EI and there was also a qualitative difference in the delivery of that intervention. We also noted that there was overlap, but it was not um, a complete overlap. So start play did show a significant difference in the key components. And um, we hope that this is going to be a helpful paper to um, be an exemplar for looking at fidelity of intervention in comparison studies. And uh, please be sure to read the paper in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology, because it will give you uh, much more detail and explanation about the project and how we came about um, examining fidelity of our intervention. Thank you.